So, Marcin, thanks very much for doing the Mr. Beacon podcast. Uh, it's great to have uh, someone from Poland. You're, uh, that's an amazing ecosystem that you've got over here. And we have tended to focus in this show interviewing uh, the CEOs of companies that make beacons, which are generally about contextual experiences based on where you are. But you do something different, talking things, your, your company, your driving experiences based on what people have about making uh, you center your business around objects. And so I think this is fascinating. Um, so far, I'm thinking that most of your business is around NFC type triggers, but maybe we'll hear more about uh, that uh, later. But we're hoping that Bluetooth is going to come in the future. Um, perhaps the best way to kick this thing off is just for you to introduce us to, to what your company does. Yes, so uh, so our company uh, in our company we do connected products, uh, but the connected products I mean um, everyday using product uh, uh, with us could be connected. So you can think about a bottle of wine, you can think about uh, medicines, you can think about even engine oil, which could be connected. So we are we talk always in our company about uh, not only about Internet of Things, but rather about Internet of Everything to connect all of these products which you buy um, uh, uh, via e-commerce or you buy um, uh, in traditional shops. So every single product which you can find on a shopping shelf could be connected. And this is exactly what we do um, in Talking Things. Yeah? And the, the way you establish that connection, uh, is that just with NFC technology or are there other technologies that you're looking at? No, we, we, we use, uh, yeah, mostly we use NFC technology, but um, it's just a matter of triggers which you use for that. Uh, it could be uh, from very simple technologies like QR codes, uh, uh, barcodes, uh, um, it could be uh, NFC technology, it could be in the future probably b uh, Bluetooth technology as well, um, but also we are very open for other uh, technologies, uh, uh, visual recognition like uh, augmented reality, which we know is uh, is quite common today for the for the for the for the products as well. So everything we can use for to establish this connection be between unique customer who is using his smartphone and uh, so, uh, and any other technology which allows us to um, identify product uh, to have this match and to have this connection between a customer and the product. Yeah. So, uh, and it seems like you potentially can do kind of end-to-end -end pretty much everything that needs to be done from helping with antenna design through to having a, a content management system and even some of the creative. Can you kind of break down into pieces what your offering consists of? Do you have uh, kind of a content management system as well as tags yes uh, of course we have end-to-end -end, uh, system which uh, uh, combine uh, as a first step uh, trigger which we select with our client uh, what kind of trigger we should use to identify this product it could be nfc and once we we decide that we use nfc we uh, support our client to decide what kind of standard we should use for that what kind of chip we should uh, use for that then we uh, make a, make a, as you mentioned, we make a tag or we uh, fit the technology exactly to the packaging uh, because everything what we do, this connection we do through packaging. So we can say that we also do smart packaging system. So once we talk about the NFC technology, which is our main uh, trigger for the for the communication, um, then uh, we uh, we design specific antenna of a tag just to fit exactly to the existing packaging not to change any uh, anything or just make small changes for this packaging then uh, we uh, deliver full cryptography for the for, for the tags uh, or, or for the selected technology, a backend front end software um, with SDK to uh, easy, to have an easy connection uh, with existing mobile application of, of our clients. Um, we deliver 
uh, full equipment. Um, this is very important thing. So we deliver antennas and readers uh, to establish connection during the uh, distribution uh, um, uh, distribution or, or during the production um, to assign uh, specific attributes to every single product. Then uh, we decide and we support with building the uh, campaigns, uh, marketing campaigns around the technology because we uh, used to say in our company that technology without a, a specific concept uh, is worth nothing. Um, so we help our clients to build these campaigns um, very specific campaigns uh, around the Internet of Things and this connectivity mobile. Um, and in the end, we collect uh, data. So we maintain this data and help. Uh, we help our clients to analyze this data, which which we which we collected. And this is exactly our end-to-end -end system. Uh, so based on this system, um, uh, we we deliver this total total solution that our clients uh, uh, don't have to think about uh, um, any um, additional company uh, to have uh, to join the project to really deliver the, the solution that they imagine. I'd love to drill into each of those areas that you touched on in, in a bit more detail but before we do that give us a sense of how developed this market is that you have focused on because this is pretty futuristic uh, in, in nature and my sense is that this isn't mainstream yet but m maybe I'm wrong are you uh, are your customers generally in kind of the pilot proof of concept stage how widespread is the embedding of NFC in products and, and, and packaging at this stage Yes, we can say that this is something new on the market. You cannot find too many pro projects, products with NFC technology on a shopping shelf today. But what we what we see from our from our perspective, from our client perspective, um, uh, that it will change uh, in couple next months, couple next years. Um, um, technology. Um, which we deliver to our clients this possibility of connectivity and to, to connect product with a client allows to solve many needs uh, which are existing on the market but in a traditional way through traditional packaging companies are not able to solve them so uh, having this possibility we we, we, we solve some of these product uh, problems um, for example um, uh, protection against refilling uh, wine bottles is one of the one of the one of the things that we that we deliver or loyalty programs through packaging uh, uh, without integration with retailers so this is also the kind of a, a solution we, uh, we, we 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 provide so today you cannot find too many pro uh, projects on the market but it will change uh, this year it will change next year um, we have a couple of implementations today uh, smaller bigger um, implementation cycle is uh, quite long but you will see even today we even run projects which will be on the market summer 2019 uh, with a big rollouts uh, so um, Today not. Today you can find some pilots implementation on the market from our side, uh, some of our regular implementations, uh, but still uh, in a small scale. Uh, but as I mentioned, we work on uh, one big implementation to, uh, implementations today, um, so it, uh, they will be on the market very soon. So you talked about anti-refilling uh, as one application, and I'm, I'm assuming that just... Uh, uh, Anti-counterfeit is another thing that uh, people are asking you for. Um, um, can you give us some examples of some of the early projects that you have done and uh, briefly summarize what, what the driver has been for those projects? Mm -hmm. uh, we've done some some projects. What I can talk uh, on the market is, for example, Al Alba 1913. This is a cosmetic company where we protect uh, products against counterfeiting, uh, so exactly the functionality you mentioned. 
um, and the connection with the client because this company is selling uh, uh, most of the product in Asia. They are from Europe, so uh, you know this contact between this uh, these two continents is uh, uh, quite difficult. So they are trying to 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 grab. Uh, uh, this clients uh, trying uh, trying to connect directly with these clients to provide them new information about the brand and to really drive this uh, this business. Um, so this is this is example of implementation we we did. Uh, what else we did? Uh, Exxon Mobil um, uh, uh, with Mobil One campaign in United States. Uh, there was a additional information about uh, um, about. Uh, um, oil which we are going to buy, but the most important uh, 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 thing in this implementation was of, uh, very easy access to information if this oil fits to your engine. So there was a there was mechanism implemented inside a, a web application that you just select your engine and just after that you uh, you get confirmation that this oil exactly fits to your engine. So this is a great example that we show how we solve the problem of a, of a, of a, of, a, of a product thanks to the connectivity and the technology inside the product. I agree. I think it's a fantastic example because I, I see some drivers that the brands care about, but maybe the customers don't. I mean, if we come back to anti-counterfeiting, how big an issue is it? And my, my sense is that the brands care about it more than the consumers. Like if I got a, um, a Rolex watch for 50 bucks, I, I know it's not a Rolex watch. I'm not really that worried about uh, counterfeiting. Um, because, because I know, uh, I guess if I'm paying five thousand dollars for it, then I want to know that it's a real one. Um, talk, talk to me a bit more about the the balance between the drivers for the brands versus the drivers for the consumers, and how you reconcile those two things. Yes, uh, you touch very important point when you talk about the counterfeiting of a product because you mentioned about one custom a customer who who buys a, a Rolex which costs fifty bucks and uh, this one who buy for five thousand yeah which is uh, which is a real price and the problem uh, is that um, this client who is who want to buy a Rolex for 50 bucks is uh, it will never be our client right. this is not person uh, this is not a person who would like to buy a, a genuine product he's just he just want to have a uh, this Rolex uh, logo on it so this is not our client we uh, rather protect this client who would like to buy genuine one uh, but uh, somebody is cheating him, so he is not able to check if this is a, uh, a genuineness of the product. Um, so this is very, very important thing. And yeah, and <clears throat> answering your question exactly, what is this relation, you know, between the client and the brand owner? Uh, um, it depends on the industry, it depends on the product, because once you are buying Rolex, okay, you can buy it for 50 bucks, there's a lot of people who would like to buy uh, a, a fake product because there is a Nike sign on that and this is still the product that you can use. But once you think about the alcohol product or, or once you think about the pharmaceutical product, everyone cares about that. Everyone would like to take a genuine pill uh, just to make sure that, uh, that it will not hurt you or it will help you because this is very also important uh, thing because there is a lot of fake product on the market uh, but uh, if, once it is placebo it's still sometimes it's still okay um, uh, but sometimes there is a very uh, you know very I can say bad appeals that it will really uh, hurt you. So uh, it will not uh, placebo will not help you. I mean, no, not make you uh, um, healthier. But uh, uh, but but once there's something which is mix of kind of mixture and you take this pill, then you can then you can be hurt. So so this is very important. Uh, which industry consider and we are talking about um, so sometimes uh, it customer really care uh, of course brand always care about that uh, uh, because this is loss of revenues once you cannot uh, sell uh, your product and your clients are cheated so um, so so this is this difference between them 
That makes sense. And, and so it's really a matter of life and death. If it's, if it's pharmaceuticals, especially, um, I, I mean, some really bad things have happened. And even products like um, baby powder and so forth, uh, uh, that, that can be really bad if, you're not, if your child's not getting the nutrition. So I can see a driver there. Can you give some more examples of why consumers would want to go to the trouble of tapping a product? I mean, it seems so simple. It's so easy to do. You have an Android phone, you tap, it's done. But the reality is it's always challenging to get a consumer to do anything other than what they would do normally to consume a product, which is to open it and take it out. What are some of the things that you are doing and how do you solve that problem of getting consumers to engage with, with the NFC tag? It's always a discussion about the uh, about the specific use case. So um, it's why we establish uh, uh, and we provide the service uh, uh, with, uh, um, uh, with 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 marketing um, uh, to have this call to action, easy access to the product. But there is always discussion about the incentive for the customer to do that. Uh, so for some group of clients, for some group of products, this is enough to give the confirmation that this is genuine product. So you have this kind of incentive. In other, uh, in other produ products, you can check if this oil really fits to your engine. In the second uh, option, you would like to collect loyalty points. People love uh, rewards, love loyalty points, collecting all of these things. So once you can do that, through packaging, through the product, without uh, carrying with you another loyalty card, it's a gr it is great incentive to to do things like that. Another group of clients, uh, you know, this is uh, clients who is uh, who prefer uh, product like for vegetarian, vegan, uh, for uh, who is buying only um, organic products. So you can uh, have this possibility to. To easy tap a product and check this is uh, you have green light to buy this product or or it it doesn't fit to your diet. So there is a there is a lot of incentive that we can provide for the customers and uh, and we can see that once you prepare the whole campaign in the right way, then it works uh, really. Customer, this is not a huge barrier to take your smartphone and check this product to get a get this more information. And of course, on top of that, it's always fun for the customers uh, to have a fun using this uh, this technology, using uh, um, uh, this product, and have this connection. Because we we don't have fun just using technology. Um, uh, of course, if you are a geek, then you are you have a, a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun just using NFC technology and things like that, or Bluetooth technology, whatever. Um, but for the normal customer, uh, this connectivity is something which gives you fun if you will provide that in the right way. So this is our domain as well to make sure that we provide this fun for the customers as well. Uh, and I think it's really interesting. So part of this is kind of marketing strategy. You know, what's the value proposition? But also part of it is the creative that you surround it with. And you, your website's beautifully done. It's, uh, and I think that kind of signals that this creative aspect is, is important too. I mean, you can have a great value proposition but if people don't understand it, if the wording's not right, if the imagery is kind of out of sync with the brand, then it's still not going to work. It seems like, I mean, you, you, you have a, um, uh, an incredible challenge because you've got, you're really multidisciplined. You've got to understand about antenna impedance and you've got to under, understand about aesthetics. How do you cover such a broad set of things as a, as a relatively young company? You know, this is uh, uh, this is uh, our focus to really deliver this wide uh, uh, possibilities for, for for our clients, and we always um, think about uh, um, <clears throat> this value. And um, we cannot talk about the technology. I will say that again because uh, customer is not using technology; they use the 
user experience. This is the key point. And everything what you do needs to be very easy for the client. Uh, and there could be very difficult technology behind that. It's like with iPhone. iPhone is really complicated inside um, and uh, a lot of uh, features, a lot of things. But for the customer, it's really easy to use that. It's why they win the uh, market today. It's why they're selling so many um, iPhones on the, on the market. So you need to think about how it will be easy for the customer. Um, and we have in our company for this, as we, met, as we start from this end-to-end -end, uh, solution, we have experts in our company, in-house guys who is responsible for every single piece. So they are able to deliver this right value for every single smart part. And once we have a client, one is selling uh, watches and different is selling soda. Um, so the use cases are totally different. Um, but uh, thanks to this connectivity, thanks to these features which we have, we can find a common ground for all of this implementation and just to fit them uh, for this specific product and for this specific use case. So, so let's just uh, revisit that kind of chain of things that you have to do briefly if we can, but, but I think it's really, each of them is interesting. Let's start off with embedding the chips in the product. You know, what have you learned about um, how to embed NFC into, into bottles and jars and that sort of thing? I mean, at, at its at the high level, seems like you just buy a tag and you slap it under the label and you're good to go. But I'm thinking it's probably a little more complicated than that. Yes, uh, yes, of course. Uh, this is not so easy. Once we talk with our biggest brand, uh, brands about the implementation, uh, it's not only sticking the you know, sticking uh, sticking a tag. Uh, and so there's a there's a great great story to show an example of that. We have a lot of followers today. We have a lot of uh, competitors, small startups. They think that NFC technology is easy to implement. They buy a lot of tags from Alibaba or from AliExpress. Um, they buy tags, they add some software um, and stick on the product and they, they think that they can buy tag which costs 20 cents, they add margin another 20 cents because of the uh, development and they try to sell something like that, just, just stick a tag on the product. But this is not the way that it could work, you know, this is a lot of, this is really long a process, implementation process, uh, um, and a lot of things to do. To fit a tag, to produce this tag uh, in the right way, to have the right um, radio frequency signal just to make sure that everyone can read it from a distance. Uh, once you have an NFC tag with iPhone 7, for example, customer needs to have a reading distance like one inch. Um, and you need to really fit this frequency to the uh, to the to the to the right smartphones to the right product. You know, um, this is not so easy. Um, liquids inside the product, for example, as you mentioned, bottle of wine or jars. If you have liquids, they interfere with uh, radio frequency waves. So, um, so uh, what kind of really frequency you should use? So, this is very complex uh, process. Um, of course, we start with our clients uh, uh, with a decision about a specific campaign, what is their needs, what we need to solve. Then we decide um, uh, which technology we use and how to fit it exactly to this specific product. Um, so then we design antenna of the tag, make a flip chip process. Um, uh, so commonly known as a bonding. Uh, so then, uh, then we deliver the full solution. But this is not just a sticking. Of course, you know the form of a tax um, as a as a sticker because this is the common form but sometimes you have something which is called dry inlay so then you have just inlay without any adhesive and then uh, then you need to combine it somehow with a, with a packaging and what is what we do exactly we embed NFC technology inside the packaging during the production of a packaging exactly so this is the this is the different story because uh, once you combine this uh, traditional packaging with technology inside during packaging production, then 
your client probably uh, doesn't have to care about the implementation of this technology, just to activate it, just to check if uh, if technology survived the whole process. So there's a lot, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things to do. Um, also, a lot of uh, improvement in the in the process. You know, NFC RFID technology today, uh, you can find it commonly in a payment cards, in access card, metro ticketing, and all of these things in some gaming, but. Nobody before us really uh, made huge steps on packaging industry to use this technology inside the packaging. So the machines are very slow, uh, or there is no machines. So we, uh, uh, during our um, development, we've uh, we've made uh, two machines, uh, uh, just specific machines to adopt this technology to implement it very fast inside packaging. We made a lot of setups, we made a lot of implementations, uh, I mean the, um, uh, the new designs uh, uh, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a machine, some, some, some modifications of an existing equipment to really make it happen. So it sounds very easy. But uh, uh, in real life, this is a really difficult thing to do. I mean, how do you solve the problem of fitting in with uh, a brand's well-established packaging process? So they, they, you know, they're making um, uh, a, a product and they've spent years figuring out how to get the right box with the right color and graphics and, and, and that sort of thing. And then you come along and say, hey, let's put an NFC tag in it. Presumably, they're not going to switch out the box production to, to uh, a provider that you like. You have to work with, do you have to work with the company that they're already working with? Or, or do brands switch? Is NFC a catalyst to say, hey, no, these guys are old school and they'll never adapt to this uh, new technology. How does that, how does that work out? Basically, I, I, I love this question because this is this is exactly what we do what, what we do um, every day. I mean, um, this is very uh, a long process how to do that. I mean, once we once we get the real product, as you mentioned, for example, they produce that uh, since ten years, uh, making just small, 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 small improvements every year to have it better, to have it cheaper, to have it, um, to have a b b better uh, efficiency and all of these things. And then guys coming uh, and they would like to put some technology inside. So do you have a lot of questions about the recycling of things and, 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 and all of these things around? And, uh, and yes, we solved this, uh, we solved this, uh, this, uh, a lot of issues and we have great experience about that and how we do that. Of of course, we go very deeply inside the process um, of, a, of a production of every single product and we are looking for uh, some gaps where we can find this possibility to put the technology inside um, and how we can do that. Uh, it's why I, I told you uh, in the very beginning that we make a design of a tag which fits exactly to a specific product, to specific uh, packaging, just to find this gap where we can put the NFC tag there, um, uh, just to make sure that we are not changing too many things in this existing existing process. So, uh, so this is this is this is our, our everyday um, uh, uh, thing. What we do uh, and uh, and our cases uh, to find these possibilities to implement that. Of course, sometimes there is no possibility to to implement that without uh, uh, some changes. But mainly, this is small, really small changes uh, um, inside the process or inside the production. We are always trying to um, uh, find a possibility to show that the return on investment in this technology would be much higher than effort which they need to put to change something in this process. And so, do you find yourself retrofitting, uh, adding a, 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 a sticker on top of the existing packaging, or do you find yourself building the tag actually into the, the packaging and kind of piggybacking on the existing production process, which, uh, which is the predominant way uh, of solving this problem? 
Of course, second, uh, yeah. second options. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, this has been really fascinating. We should uh, we could talk for an hour, uh, many hours more about this, but uh, uh, let's just uh, wrap up with uh, one last topic, which is the data. So you have we've talked a, a lot about getting the tags onto the packaging and and the creative around uh, getting people to engage. Um, and why they would do that, but what, what kind of data are, are brands hungry for and what, what have you been able to deliver them through your platform? Because that's part of what you do, isn't it? There's a dashboard and you deliver data. Yes, so we collect uh, all of this information which we can collect about the product. I mean, for us, every single product is unique. This is a very uh, important thing and this is where everything really starts. And uh, uh, what we do then, uh, we assign some attributes for every single product, every single unique product. So once we assign expiration day, once we assign a batch number, once we assign a, um, uh, uh, any other production attributes, then you have a unique who, 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 is, uh, who uses a uh, smartphone so we know that the customer is also unique so uh, once you have unique product and unique customer then you make this uh, this this uh, uh, this uh, this match and uh, thanks based on that we collect the information that we know that there is a Steve in San Diego who who, who uh, who's uh, scan one product second and third product so of course we save the information when you when you uh, when you do that, uh, what kind of product, from which uh, service, um, we know how often you use your smartphone for, for this kind of activities. We know where you are using your smartphone, of course, of course if you give us a, a location data. We know if you open the product or not. So this is a very important thing as well, because once you have, for example, just a QR code, you know that somebody just tap a product and he maybe he was interested in a product, maybe he was interested in a QR code. But um, we have three ways of communication with a with a with a with a be, between client and the product. First is just a simple tap that we know that somebody was interested in the product. Then we measure interaction with the product. So customer rate it, give a comment, share it on a social media or something like that. And third a very valuable option is uh, that once you open the product, we can detect that. Uh, and then this is really great information for every single brand owner that you know that somebody bought this product. So you know exactly that this is your customer and you know how often he, he buys this product. So this is the, this is the data which we, which we collect. And you can imagine how big this data is today and how, how many information you can collect and how you can use them for marketing activities, um, uh, uh, logistic activities for great market activities prevention to protect your products against parallel distributions and all of this uh, all of this uh, this kind of uh, activities so this is uh, this is uh, data which we collect uh, of course uh, there is a lot of details uh, but probably we will not finish between them uh, <laughs> before midnight today so so there's a lot of uh, things to uh, to discuss but overall this is this kind of uh, this kind of data but this is really a revolutionary concept isn't it because traditionally brands created the product and they handed it off to a third party and then they had no idea who was buying it and how they were using it and so forth so there must be a lot of excitement within the brands that they're suddenly finding out who their customers are. Do you see that? Yeah. Yes, definitely we can see this excitement and uh, our clients really love this, uh, this idea. It's why we have so many clients today, big brands, uh, who really think about the revolution and really consider our technology as, as a revolution inside uh, a day management inside the way how they treat the products how they organizing every single step of a production uh, then distribution then uh, all of this logistic activities in store communication with the client uh, then uh, in-house communication with the client even some clients are considered to use our uh, technology also for the last recycling 
uh, issues. So uh, you can see this whole cycle, how it can change the way brands think about the product and they can see how technology will, uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, really can change uh, the, uh, the, the, the products. And are, are people, how excited are people in, in, in monetary terms? So there's a dollar figure on this, isn't there? Because you're taking something, packaging, which the science was all about how to squeeze another half a penny out of the cost of production. And you're suddenly bringing in all this extra cost. It seems to me that this has almost got to be seen at, at, at the CEO level. It's going to, you know, are we in the business of, of, of shipping um, t-shirts or are we in the business of kind of connecting directly with our customers? Who do you see driving this? Um, and, and, you know, what are your thoughts about how do you qualify a client? You know, if, if someone just says, hey, I'm from the packaging department, we thought it'd be kind of cool to have NFC in there. Um, what's, how do you deal with that? And, 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 to, and how many of your customers are, are really tackling this at the top level in their companies? Uh, most of our clients really, uh, really treat this uh, technology as a top, top uh, innovation that they can implement inside these products thanks to the, the possibilities of changing the way they communicate with, uh, in B2B and B2C. Uh, so there is a lot of, there is a lot of clients they consider that as a, as a, as a real future. Uh, in some of them, we are in the first place in a, in a, in a innovation and these clients really uh, and as you mentioned, they, they really uh, sometimes it's really uh, CEO level to make the decision. But uh, uh, CEO needs to have return on investment. And uh, once you talk with a packaging team, of course, everyone try to squeeze uh, and find savings on this on this packaging. But once you have, once you show, uh, always once you show return on investment, uh, um, then. Uh, then, uh, then you can add uh, even a couple of cents to every single product uh, because you will earn more or you will find more savings because we always talk about the two paths to find the return on investment in our solution. First is to find a savings um, inside, a, uh, inside existing processes, which is easy to calculate once we start uh, discussion about specific implementation and the second is increase of a sales so this is also um, a way to find a return on investment it's not so easy to really calculate it uh, uh, what will be real response from the market before you make a pilot implementation or first implementation uh, to calculate how many how much you will earn how how you will grow your revenues before that but it's always about this return on investment to find a to find its possibility to uh, uh, um, to implement this technology inside inside this product well i was expecting you to talk about increase in sales but to be honest i'm kind of surprised that there are opportunities to save money uh, how can you save money by putting smart packaging in place uh, you can find savings in some other areas than smart, just smart packaging. It's not smart. Uh, it's not packaging itself where you can find the savings, but you can find savings uh, um, uh, in a logistic, uh, uh, in a distribution. You can find some savings in, uh, uh, for example, where you are losing a lot of money uh, on a gray market activities. So this is this is place. Uh, this is places where you can find this. Uh, the savings we've built, for example, for uh, one of uh, clients, special device which can recognize every single product. So thanks to that, they have stock monitoring. Having stock monitoring, you are not driving to every single uh, uh, store to check if it is still full or not. You just uh, go and refill only this uh, uh, this products. Uh, uh, the, only go to the to the to the store where the, the this uh, this specific machine is empty. So you have savings on this uh, uh, on this uh, this kind of activities as well. Wonderful. 
Well, I think we've covered a lot. We've talked about the technology. We've talked about the business. Uh, Martin, thank you so much. You are a real pioneer in this space. I, I wish you the best of luck, and I look forward to keeping in touch with you as this, as this area explodes, which I think it's going to. Yeah, thank you very much, Steve. Thank you for this invitation, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, Happy New Year. Yeah, happy New so. Year.